Hey there guys, we're taking a look at the Witcher 3 next-gen update running on the AMD Ryzen 5 5500U. Now you're looking at the game currently running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and the resolution set to 100% of 1080p. No resolution scaling, no FSR on top of it. This is pretty much how it just runs at the stock 15 watt TDP with nothing on top of it. And as you can see, the performance isn't great. It's at least consistent, but it is pretty consistently bad. We're just in this one particular area and as you go around the map and go on to different locations, you will notice that the performance will dip down even worse than this. So it is a very, very demanding scenario and it really doesn't work well with this chip. Luckily, if we turn on the dynamic resolution scaling, the level of performance that we get improves dramatically. Our averages now start to pretty much double going from just the 20s now all the way up into the 40 FPS range. And I think that for the vast majority of APU users, out there you are better off just going with the dynamic resolution scaling and turning it on even if the one percent lows don't really get as much of an uplift they still get to a close enough range that realistically you could play like this and while visually speaking it doesn't look amazing it doesn't have a lot of the drawbacks that come with using something like fsr at a lower preset which we'll take a look at right now as you can see here fsr at the ultra performance preset gives us similar though sometimes worse performance than just using the dynamic resolution scaling but the thing is is now everything has a fuzziness around it which is something that you did not see with the dynamic resolution scaling now the dynamic resolution scaling doesn't look amazing because it is of course dropping the render resolution but at such a low preset fsr does look pretty bad that i feel like the dynamic resolution scaling just ends up looking better in the long run and considering that we're getting pretty much no performance uplift here at all there's really no use reason to use fsr like this but of course we can try to raise the tdp up to 25 watts and see what that does to the overall performance now at 25 watts the full 1080p resolution still is not salvaged our one percent lows are now closer to our averages and our averages are getting really close to 30 fps but it's still not enough to make this a worthwhile experience but we do at least see somewhat of a performance uplift though not really one that is meaningful enough to make this a good enough experience to play like this. so of course we definitely need to just turn on the dynamic resolution scaling and see what that gives us here and once that's enabled we start to get some really nice levels of performance here with averages that are now getting very very close to 60 and 1% lows that for the most part are just going to stay at the 30 fps range it pretty much means that we're going to get a really rock solid level of performance here and this is realistically how i would recommend that you play the game you don't need to drop the default render resolution down to 720p or anything like that pretty much just turn on the dynamic dynamic resolution scaling and you should be good to go. Of course, we can take a look at what FSR is going to be like in comparison to this at the 25 watt TDP. But I think that at this point, you've realized that FSR, especially when it comes to FSR 2.0, has such an overhead in terms of performance that on these lower end APUs, you just really don't get any benefit to using it. And as you can see, FSR with the ultra performance preset is not giving us a great level of performance, at least in comparison to just the dynamic resolution scaling though the 1% lows are pretty close to 30 and our averages are still decent enough but the thing is is visually speaking this looks pretty noticeably bad in comparison to just the dynamic resolution scaling for worse performance so there's really no reason to use FSR in this game like this. Now, it is different if you have a dedicated graphics card. But when it comes to these APUs, and at least the Vega-powered APUs, which pretty much any of them that aren't from the thick 6000 series and up are going to be Vega-powered, they just don't really do well with FSR 2.0 and up when it comes to just the, the level of gaming experience that you end up getting. So I would avoid touching FSR on here. Just go with the dynamic resolution scaling, and you should be good to go. But of course, this was all tested with 16 gigabytes of RAM. We're going to be doing an 8 gigabyte test after this. So be sure to subscribe to take a look at that. That should be coming out later today. So I will see you guys next time.